In this video, we'll talk about some strategies for how to complete maximum and minimum application problems. We'll use this example. From a thin piece of cardboard 9 inches square, we're going to cut small square corners off the sides and then fold up the sides to make a box. And what we want to know is what the maximum possible volume of that box could be. So here's the general strategy that we're going to be following. The first thing we need to do is read the problem carefully and draw a picture if necessary. Many problems will come with a picture, but sometimes we'll have to draw the picture ourselves. The next thing that we're going to want to do is identify the thing that we want to maximize or minimize and find a formula for it. And the formula might start out having lots of variables in it. If we want to maximize the area of a rectangle, area equals length times width. If we want to maximize Profit, profit equals revenue minus cost. We want to start with some sort of formula and so that we have a starting point. That's called our objective function. But if that function does have several variables in it, what we're going to need to do is reduce that function down to where it only has one variable. And we're going to do that using what are called constraints. And once we have an objective function that only has one variable in it, we'll be able to use our calculus strategies to maximize or minimize that function. So to better understand this problem, let's just try a value to see what happens. So what if the squares that we cut out are 1 inch by 1 inch? Then our picture looks a little something like this. Notice that when we fold up the sides, the sides become the height of the box. So that 1 inch square that we cut out becomes the height of our box. The remaining dimensions of the box will then be 7 inches by 7 inches. We cut two squares off of each side, which means since we started with 9 inches and we cut 1 inch off twice, that leaves us with 7 inches. So our volume is length times width times height, 7 times 7 times 1, which is 49 cubic inches. But of course we don't know that this is the maximum volume, this is simply one of the many many ways that we could create this box. Sometimes we want to do this for these kinds of problems. We want to try numbers just to see how the problem goes, just to make sure that we understand what is being asked for. We haven't really done any calculus yet. We're just sort of exploring the problem and making sure that we understand it. So thinking back to the outline that we had earlier, our objective function is the volume of the box. That's the thing that we want to maximize. And the volume of a box is length times width times height. Now obviously that formula, length times width times height, is not useful for us yet. It's got too many variables in it. But now we need to look for the constraints in the problem to reduce that down to a single variable. The variable that we're going to use here is the size of the cutout. That's the thing that we have control over. We can make a small square cutout to make a really short box, or we can make a very large square cutout to make a tall box. And somewhere in there is going to be the perfect size of that cutout that's going to give us the maximum volume. The constraint in the problem here is the original size of the square that we cut things out of, the 9 inches by 9 inches. That's something that we don't have any control over. That's going to restrict our options for what the volume of the box could be. So since we know our variable is going to be the size of the cutout, and we also saw earlier that the size of that cutout is going to turn into the height of our box, let's simply call that x instead of h. And just like before, since we're cutting two x's off of each side, and the sides start at 9, we're going to take that 9 and subtract away two x's. So the length and the width of our box are 9 minus 2x. So that means the volume is length times width times height, but now we realize that it's 9 minus 2x times 9 minus 2x times x. And now we have our objective function. And now that we have a function with only one variable, we can use calculus. We can multiply that out to get 81x minus 36x squared plus 4x cubed. Take a derivative of that, and now we'll set it equal to 0. Setting the derivative equal to 0 gives us two critical values, 1.5 and 4.5. We can use the second derivative test to test those critical values, and we see that v has a maximum at x equals 1.5 because the second derivative is negative there, and that means that's the solution we're looking for. Notice that with this problem and with most of these word problems, the hard part is setting up the problem. The hard part is finding the objective function with only one variable. The derivative here was a relatively simple derivative, setting it equal to zero and using the second derivative test. None of that was particularly difficult. The hard part was setting up the problem in the first place. And you're going to find that that's going to be common among these word problems. But we're not done yet. The final step is to go back to the original problem and make sure that we've actually answered the question that was being asked. If you remember, the question asked, what is the maximum possible volume of a box that can be made in this way? And that's not what we figured out. 
We figured out how to get the maximum volume, but we didn't actually figure out what the maximum volume was. So we need to take that critical point, 1.5, and plug it back into our original volume formula to get 54. So that means that the final answer to our question is 54 cubic inches. That's the maximum volume. So just to recap, here's the strategy. Step one is to read the problem carefully and draw a picture if necessary. And at this point, it's sometimes useful to try plugging in simple numbers to see how the problem works out. If there is a variable, if there's a choice that you can make, simply try plugging in some numbers for that choice just to make sure that you understand the relationship between the quantities and the problem. Once you've done that, you want to identify the quantity that you want to maximize or minimize. That's going to be the objective function. Then use the constraints in the problem, the restrictions, the constants, the things that don't change, the relationships that are constant, to rewrite the objective function as a function of only one variable. Once that's all done, you'll be feeling more comfortable because you'll be taking a derivative, setting it equal to zero, and testing it. And we've done a lot of those examples before. And then finally, make sure you go back and answer the question that was being asked.